we're getting to know one of our very own. He's one of Cranston's finest. He's an actor, a director, he's a writer. He is Tom DiNucci. Hey, how you doing? I'm pretty good. How you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm settled in. These chairs were giving me a little issue. I almost fell off. We almost killed in. you on a Pro FM chair. I'm settled and I'm feeling great now. That would not make a good movie plot. It would not. No, not at all. Very anticlimactic. So tell me now, what is the last movie that you went and saw in the theater? Uh, what is it? Uh, a Star is Born. I, <gasps> I yeah. haven't seen it yet. I went and, uh, you know, I, w I went and checked it out and, uh, you know, great music. Did so. you believe in all the hype in a movie? Like, as, as an actor and a director and a writer and being involved in the industry, like, when you hear all the hype that's built up to, like, A Star is Born and Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper, do you buy into that, or...? Well, I mean, you know, I, I, I try to always watch it just for the story that it is, but, you know, of course, like, that was part of what drove me to see it. I kind of wanted to see what the hype was. And, yeah. Yeah, you know, movies sometimes can be, yeah, you know, formulaic, and you try to see, like, what's hot, what are people into right now, like, what's current, so... Yeah. It's always good to, you know check out uh, a big hit once in a while and see like what is it that's making this work. How often do you go to the movie theater? Not as much as you think. You know, I'm, I'm more of a, a homebody. I like to watch my stuff at home. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but if I do go, it, it'll usually be for like, you know, it's always nice to watch the big movies in the big theaters, the superhero movies, your Star Wars movies. That's the last movie I went and saw. Super, which Avengers Infinity Avengers. War, because yeah, I'm it. obsessed with Marvel. Um, so you're like a little Ocean State treasure, can I call you that? Wow, so you're the Ocean born, State treasure. Yeah, you're born in Rhode Island, well, raised in Rhode Island, you live in Rhode Island, and yeah. now you make films in Rhode Island. Yeah, it's been something. Uh, you know, it's always something I've wanted to do. Uh, you know, I grew up on movies by, like, the Farley Brothers and those types of films, and uh, that was definitely a big inspiration, seeing that you can make a movie and tell a story, more importantly, from your backyard. Right. Um, but it's also just really beneficial because, you know, we, we all have this Rhode Island mentality. Like, everybody <laughs> knows everybody. Everyone's got an uncle that can help you out. Oh, oh you need this? Oh, I got a friend who owns a shop. Three like degrees of separation. Yeah, there's all this, like, three degrees of separation going on that helps you make a movie because when you produce a movie, you need things. You need all kinds of things, yes. you know, for lack of a better word. Locations, cars, extras, uh, you know, uh, you never know what extras. you might Extras? Next time, next time. <laughs> you need a terror on set, you know people who people call my people. Oh, okay, that's how it works. Um, so I thought we were cool. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so Rhode Island's very, uh, you know, excited about films. They get into it. They jump up and down every time, you know, and, and want to be involved. Uh, whereas I've made movies in other places where they're, you know, they're kind of jaded. You make a movie in L.A., it's no big deal. It's like they make movies every day there. So, you know, you'll actually, I've had a situation where I directed a film in L.A., and they started mowing the lawn next door and because they wanted us to pay them off. We'd go over, you give them a hundred bucks, they stop mowing the lawn. That's like, really? That's actually like a thing. You could easily just move off to Hollywood and make your home there and build your career there. But you make Rhode Island so proud you stay here in Rhode Island. Why is that? Well, you know, it's, it's one of these things where you know, I, I haven't made films just exclusively in Rhode Island. I've worked in L.A. and I've got a couple other things that we're planning on doing beyond Rhode Island. But I just, again, like I love the, uh, the community aspect of it and how a movie really does bring everyone together. And beyond that, you know, I've, I've been able to fortunately tell a really great Rhode Island story with my last movie, Vault, which will be coming out sometime, we hope, next year, uh, which tells the tale of uh, one of the largest armed robberies in American history that took place right here. So what you're Rhode telling Island. me, Tom, is that it's a rom-com. Yeah, it's, you know, it's light. <laughs> It's, very, it's funny you say that, though, because, you know, as much as, uh, you know, there's some dark elements there, um, like a lot of these, you know, gangster movies, there's some heart to them and there is some humor to it. And, yep. you know, Rhode Islanders do have this natural sense of humor that, you know, is kind of unique. Uh, so we definitely tried to capture that as well. So it's not just all shoot 'em up gangster stuff. Right. You know. Chaz Palminteri, you got to work with him. Chaz Palminteri uh, is a, you know, he's, he's a bit of a treasure in his own right, um, you know, especially in that genre, and working with him was really great, and just getting a chance to, you know, sit back and kind of kind of riff with these guys and play, and, you know, Chaz was a guy who came up to me early on, he was kind of just like, I'm not going to, you know, I don't want to do him an impression, but he was basically just like, hey, listen, you know, I like to keep it rolling, so just keep the camera rolling, and we'll just kind of work together, and and it was great to have that kind of freedom uh, where, you know, right off the bat, he let me know, like, hey, you're not going to be stepping on my toes. <laughs> I want you to bring me to a certain place and right. you know, tell me what you're feeling. And, um, 
That was great. We, it broke the ice really quickly. So we have now what's called a locked picture. The cut is locked. I can't change. I couldn't change anything if I wanted to. Okay. And sometimes I still obsess, and I'm like, oh, ooh, we should have cut three fourths of a second sooner from this scene. It's, it's very obsessive the way I am when I watch these things. But now I'm locked. I can't do anything to it. And what they're doing is they're colorizing it, which is basically like the big Instagram Break it down filter. into our, our terms. It's an Instagram filter of life. Put Excellent. on your entire movie. I definitely need a filter. I forget what I look like now as you, myself now anymore. You can imagine, like, <laughs> filtering is so important, right, in yes. our daily activities. It really is. It's oh, that's so, so pathetic. Yes. And it really is. We all filter to the point where, you know, sometimes you find yourself being like, I'm spending a lot of time on this. Yeah, filtering. like sometimes I just want to brag <laughs> and do the hashtag no filter. You right, know what I mean? You know, sometimes. Seriously. We, you know, we got a filter. We just got yeah. a filter. So it's one of those things where we kind of have to obsess over every single scene and do that. So basically, we're at the point where we're, we're making all the colors pop and uh, hashtag lots of filters. <laughs> And uh, also the music's being written by my co-writer. We've had a very unique situation in this film. My co-writer, B. Dolan, also is composing all no the music. No way! The How talented! He's a super talented guy. That's incredible. He's he's he really is a genius. He'd probably make fun of me if I said that or laugh at me or whatever. But like he yeah. is. I mean, like his uh, ability to not only tell a story uh, through screenwriting, but to tell a story through his music is is really great. And. Uh, I can't wait for people to hear that music because it's authentic 70s sounding music. I'm excited to see like the wardrobe and the attire then if it's set in the 70s. Yes, the wardrobe really came together nicely. Uh, I had a lot of fun, at, you know, kind of going <laughs> through and you? stealing some of the clothes <laughs> afterwards. I got a nice uh, closet full of 70s shirts. Was this always like the dream for you? Like, was it about academics as a kid or was it about film and theater? Uh, you know, I, Listen, if, if you're not doing that great in school, it, it's okay, because there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I wasn't the best student. I was able to graduate, which was nice. Uh, my parents I find this hard to believe. But I just wasn't a good student. I wasn't engaged uh, really at all. And then my senior year in high school is kind of a funny story. I'll give you the quick version. But Cranston you, East or Cranston West, Cranston by the way? Cranston West. Okay. Um, go Falcons. Um, so basically... <laughs> Uh, junior year, you're picking out all your classes for senior year, yes. and there was a girl that I liked, and she was picking out classes for senior year, and she was like, uh, well, I'm going to do this film production, video production class. And I was like, oh, I'm doing that too. Oh, what a coincidence. <laughs> That's so funny. You did it because yeah. of a so girl. So then, you know, I sign up for the class, and it turns out she wasn't even in that class. Oh, it no. It was like the Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday deal. I wasn't in the right one, but that was probably for the better because I paid attention, I made this music video that I thought was gonna get me in trouble because it was a little pressing the envelope, yep. it was a little bit dark at points. About what? And uh, well, it was just like, you know, it was like, it was silly and stupid and did some, you know, R-rated, how about that? It was R-rated. Uh, well, at least it wasn't X-rated. It was certainly not X-rated. I'd be <laughs> thrown out of school, I wouldn't have graduated. Um, so my teacher called me, so I was like, hey, I wanna to talk to you after class. And I was like, oh boy, here we go. What did I, I've offended people now. Uh, and he basically was like, hey, hey, that was awesome. No and I was way. like, oh wow, really? And that was really like the first time I'd ever been good at anything. You know, I've been okay at stuff. Right. I've always been like very middle, captain middle of the road guy. And then like I found something that I was pretty good at. And then all of a sudden it was just like a light, a light was turned on and I stole my dad's camcorder and I started just, you know, filming everything that was around me. And, uh, I love that you say camcorder because now kids would say cell phone. They wouldn't even know what a camcorder No, they wouldn't even they know what that is. A VHS cam? tape? What was, is that? My dad said there's some guy named Cam Quarter. <laughs> I don't know First who name he is. Cam, last name Quarter. <laughs> Cameron Quarter? I don't know. He's a great actor. <laughs> Cameron Quarter here. You should go check him out so, yeah, in his took, latest film. I took that camcorder and we you know, made some movies. And I found out that at the New England Institute of Technology, one can advance their interest in this art of filmmaking. And so that was your plan. You and just yeah. kind of all rolled and, out and from and there. From there was another kind of, oh wow, these is a bunch of like-minded kids like me that mm -hmm. want to do this. And when you put a bunch of like-minded people together, it can be very inspiring. And you, know, right. you start building off of that excitement and you're making movies before you know it. And you've been working on so many other films. I know you made some Christmas films here, Saving Christmas. Yes. Was that with Ed Asner? He's like the quintessential Santa. Yeah, Ed, but Ed was a real uh, treasure to work with in his See? own right. See, great word. We keep using it, treasure. He was a treasure because treasures are very old. <laughs>
Okay, well, that's not what I meant about you. Oh, boy. Nice guy. Yeah, so so many projects that you've been working on, and now you have a new one. I do. Um, This is still in the early, early developmental stage, but uh, I'm working on, um, with a producer by the name of uh, Rick Granoff, um, I'm working on the Maurice Starr biopic, which is basically... Uh, about the creator, founder, guy behind all the music for the New Kids on the Block. I mean, around here, that is a monster. Yeah, the New Kids are, you know, just celebrating their 30th anniversary. Uh, Actually, they were just uh, in New York a couple weeks ago uh, doing a performance for that. And, And it's pretty wild that here we are three decades later and people, you know, are still pretty excited about this. Here on Pro week. FM this month, it's New Kids on the Block Tober. Is that right? Yes, because we've been giving away tickets oh, to their show. They're cool going on tour from. in 2019. Oh, oh yeah. Because she dropped that hashtag on me. Listen, Twitter. I know my New Kids on the Block. Like, October. That's I used to, brilliant. maybe my first childhood crush was Jordan Knight. Jordan. And I got to tell him that I used to <laughs> sleep with him because I slept on his face on my pillow every huh. night. So I don't know how he felt no, about funny. that, but he did laugh. You so know, that was my sister's favorite. Oh, well. really? You know, She's I, got good you know, taste. I liked Donnie as a kid. He's a bad he's boy. A bad he's boy. like the exactly. rough, tough, bad cool. boy. I feel like little boys like Donnie because he was like, what? I got only one strap on my overalls. And Badass. I care. Right. Um, but it's a great story. The cool thing about this story uh, that I didn't realize when I got into it early on um, was that Maurice Starr created... New Edition yes. first, first, which was the you know Bobby Brown, um, the singer from Bella Day Laveau, of course. There were a couple of stars in that group. Um, and he wrote all their music for their first album. They mm-hmm. were a big success. And then things went sideways. And, you didn't know, work out. Didn't work out, as sometimes things happen in, this, in, in the entertainment world. Yeah. And, you know, he kind of, like, pulled himself up by the bootstraps and, like, bounced back. It's a... It's more of a comeback story than I ever realized, this Maurice Starr biopic. And that's kind of how I'm approaching it. You know, a guy who was kind of like, you know, you know, he, he went up here, was kind of brought down to the, the very bottom mm-hmm. by being, you know, essentially kicked out of the group that he created. And then, you know, a lot of guys would have walked Happens away. Happens to me all the time. <laughs> but a lot of people would have, like, quit right there. You know, that might have been the last straw for some people. Right. And he was like, no, I'm going to come back. And what he did was, you know, create... a uh, you know, a franchise that went on to gross over a billion dollars. And at one time, there was over a thousand products. That the said merchandise. That's what I'm talking about with this band. Um, so we've got that project going on. And again, that's the early stages. Just got back from Deland, Florida. I was going to say, uh, how do you research a project like that? Like, what's I your went first down to move? Deland. Uh, Deland. Is that where he lives yeah, now? Yeah, he or? lives in Deland, and it's it's really cool. Uh, you know, it's it's a. Uh, it's this uh, beautiful home down there where he lives with his family and his mother's 88 years old and still rocking and rolling. She's a wonderful woman. And we get to sit down and, and spend some time with them. And um, There's no better way to pick up a person. You know, if you're going to write a story about a character and pick up their nuances than to spend time with them and see what the, those little p- pieces of humanity are that you know, make them tick. But the next project I'm going to make is with Chad Verdi, and it's a it's a actually a science fiction movie. Ooh. Yeah, we're going to try to do something totally different because one thing that I've always wanted to do with my career is to try and you know tell stories in a lot of different genres. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as much as I love crime drama and you know gangster tales and things like that, like I don't want to horror films and horror films. Yeah, like I I like to move through different genres and tell all different stories. So. This next one, you know, it's our crack at a sort of science fiction story that takes place in the not too distant future. Okay. Which is all about, you know, there's a crazy thing going on with social media and the way our our phones are working and it's almost like our technology is moving too quickly for us, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's like moving faster than we can possibly I can't I it. can't handle it at times. I need right. to take a break from it. <laughs> and, and you know, things like AI are becoming, you know, so so scarily and, and so so intensely advanced mm-hmm. that we have machines making even more advanced machines. And right. It's a very scary world and you don't know uh, what the next 10 years could hold and it's not that The technology far away. is taking over. Yeah, so that's kind of like where we're going with this next Awesome. Point. Well, that's it. Cranston's finest. That's it. Tom Danucci, thank you so thank much you. for joining us Thanks today. Thanks for having me.